So basically, I think a lot of that was um, um, talked about in the in the last couple talks, but um, with five minutes, it's, it's quite limited. So my number one point, and I can't do this in a video, is that radiologists miss these. I can't tell you how many root tears I've seen with very frustrated patients who've seen another doctor, presumably who just looked at the MRI report and didn't see anything wrong, and the patient continued to have pain. So we call these underserved tears. And obviously, we also have radial cleavage um, tears in that category. But uh, root tears, I, I think, were, were really un underappreciated for a very long time. Um, as was mentioned, if how much cartilage wear is too much, that's still a debate. Um, but osteoarthritis can progress very quickly in these patients. So I would suggest if you see a patient and it's been more than three months since they've had their MRI, re-image them because you can see some catastrophic these tears. So number two, I think in every case you need to pie crust the MCL. I think it's easy and I'll show you there's data that says it doesn't make any long-term uh, difference. I think a medial notch plasty can be helpful, um, but most important, um, you really need good visualization. The last thing you wanna do is cause more damage uh, to the knee. Um, when you do, um, the, once you got a good view back here, I think you need a good surface to heal it to. So taking a curette and different companies have sets for root repair that come with a special curette, but any curved curette can work. You basically need to have a good bony surface to heal it, but you also wanna be able to see the pin as you start drilling your pin. Um, you really need the right equipment. And so when I started uh, doing root repairs, all I had was an ACL aimer. And the problem with the ACL aimer is that it takes up a lot of room and I think you have to do a larger medial notchplasty. But if that's all you got, ask for the ACL, um, the pediatric ACL guide, because at least the little hook is a little bit smaller. Um, there you can kind of curve around the tibial spines. Um, multiple companies make these systems and multiple companies also make a, an aim or pin here that has a sheath. So um, Arthrex, Smith & Nephew, a number of different companies make it so that you can essentially um, uh, drill and be able to see um, what you're doing. So here you can see the, the cannulated tip coming through here, um, which allows you to then pass a suture. Um, as far as getting posterior, as I mentioned, the ACL guide is, is difficult. Um, but a cannulated reamer makes everything easier. Um, here you can see passing this loop. You can also pass a stiff fiber stick. Anything is fine as far as getting, getting through, but you need to make sure you've cleared off that soft tissue and bone or you're not gonna be able to see. Um, so as far as the suture passing, I recommend drilling the tunnel first because you have better visualization, but you can use different kinds of reusable suture passers. Um, I like using suture tape because it's stronger. As Nick mentioned, these sutures aren't necessarily strong enough. Now, or your suture to cut through that meniscal tissue. There's also a sateryx, and you can pass um, with these uh, single-use suture passers. And this has actually made this procedure, I think, much more reproducible. Um, here, you can just just see so you can pass essentially a mattress and then bring it through like a luggage tag, uh, which can really make the, for a better repair. I typically pass with two sutures. Um, I also like to mark the sutures with pen just so I know which ones I'm pulling on to get adequate tension because I'm outside of the knee. Um, here's just with a knee scorpion, you can see passing a loop suture or a link suture tape here, which um, it can also be a very good option. Um, when you shuttle the suture through the tibia. Again, I pass the, the, the um, monofilament first and then I'm able to pass my sutures back through. You can see here it's nicely cleaned off. Oh, um, set. And really you need to get the right equipment. Um, here you can just see sh shuttling the sutures. Quick case, 57 year old, stepped off a ladder, felt a pop. Here you can see a clear tear. The radiologist did miss this one. Another 44 year old female, very active. Um, securing your sutures really doesn't matter, but um, you can use a post, a button, or a footprint anchor. Here you can see marrow venting, extremely important. 
I think I'm out of time, but here you can see there's good data that the outcomes of microventing are better. You don't have to use PRP and add cost to your procedure, um, but significant reduction in, in failure. Brian, uh, Seth, you can cut me off. <laughs> we will. <laughs> um, just another study showing that in goats, um, microventing really helps as well. And I think if it's good for a goat, it's good for us. Um, I think that PRP is fine, but it just adds cost to your procedure. And I think it's important to keep these patients with very limited weight bearing since they're overweight. In many cases, we do use Xarelto in most patients to prevent DVT. Um, in the, these type of um, injuries.